kau Tuhan pasti buka jalan My name is Saul Timisela and I 45 years old I came from Indonesia February 14 1998 Saul Temasila is one of many Indonesians who fled their country during a wave of violence that accompanied the fall of longtime dictator Suharto. As a member of the targeted ethnic Chinese Christian minority, Saul hoped to take refuge in the U.S. But 14 years later, he's still fighting to stay. When I wake up in the morning, since I opened my eyes, I just sit down and pray, thank God I still alive in a beautiful place like this. Saul does live in a beautiful place. It's the Reformed Church of Highland Park, but it's hardly a home. His makeshift studio is actually a Sunday school classroom. A few weeks ago, he squeezed his life into a single suitcase, left his apartment in Highland Park, and very publicly defied a deportation order to take refuge in the church. All the lovely people from this church give me all the all brand new here. The seat, the thing, comfort, pillow, everything brand new. Wow. When you meet people who've gone through horrific violence, you immediately want to offer safety and a new beginning. You certainly don't want to uh, subject people to being sent back to a place where violence has been done to them. We see this as a massive justice issue. Um, oh, tomorrow, 10 o'clock to 11.15. That's good. Saul is settling into a daily rhythm. After morning prayers, he helps around the church, then busies himself with the activities on a daily schedule. All right. But since he came to the church at the beginning of March, Saul hasn't strayed beyond the confines of the property. I, come on. The weather is good outside, look like nice the weather, but I just stay on the gates. I just stay on the gates for now. Even with all the church's activity, there's still a lot of downtime for Saul. He misses his wife, Juliana, another refugee who lost her first husband in the violence. This past weekend, they were together at Sunday service. Most of the close-knit community of Chinese Indonesians in central New Jersey left in the aftermath of the violent rioting in 1998. Many of them lost family members or were brutalized themselves. Saul's brother-in-law, a pastor in his hometown on the island of Ambon, was dismembered and set on fire at his church. People on the bus, they grab you, they asking you ID, because in Indonesia ID, they, have, they say over there your, your religion. And you, you, you know already, if they ask you ID, that's it, you, you day done, you day finished. Many young women, especially, Uh, from ethnic Chinese and then Christian uh, been killed. Before they've been killed, they, they've been raped. Many children that lost their parents. A large number of Indonesian Christians entered the U.S. at this time on tourist visas and ended up in legal limbo. In the majority of cases, asylum applications were rejected because the refugees failed to apply within one year of their arrival. The merits of their cases were never even considered. The goal is to get that one year time bar removed so that folks can have their case considered on its merits. That's all we're asking for. It's the smallest to ask. It for immigration and customs enforcement officials, this is a straightforward case. Saul is an immigration fugitive who's been ordered out of the country. This country is founded by people like me. People come running from religion persecution. They have the same background and they built this country. ICE officials have said the agency doesn't typically go into sensitive locations, 
like houses of worship. But just in case, volunteers take turns spending the late night hours at the church, so Saul is never alone. I have to pass this, uh, this time, I have to pass it, that's why I just pray, God give me strength to pass this, you know, bad time. Oh, man. <laughs> 